Oh yes, yes, I love you. I love you too. Yes, we're filming a video though, so so let's let's get to it. Hello, everybody. Today I'm hitting you with a different kind of video. We're gonna be talking about math. We all know that writing and math don't usually go together, and thus, writers tend to struggle with the business end of the industry, which is a problem since writing is a business. I actually have a background in business finance. I used to be a stockbroker and an accountant, so this is one area that I happen to know very well, and I actually enjoy a lot. And yes, I know this is really boring to a lot of people, but this sort of stuff is necessary if you want to be successful in this industry. Do you want to be successful in this industry? I know you do. Whether you go with traditional or self-publishing, you need to have a basic grasp of business and finance to at the very least protect yourself. What's going on, lady? Which brings me to today's topic. This video is dedicated to one of my patrons over at Patreon, Catherine Doveland. Catherine is one of my OG patrons. She was actually a beta reader for The Savior's Champion, and I fucking love her. She wanted to know more about how to manage your finances as a writer, and this is extremely important. I could make a ton of videos all about the financial end of being a writer, but today I'm starting with the absolute basics. The stuff you need to know before you finish a book, let alone publish one. One of the biggest complaints of aspiring writers is that they can't afford anything. If they're going the traditional route, they can't afford marketing. If they're going with self-publishing, they can't afford an editor or a cover artist. One of the simplest and most effective ways to avoid this issue is with budgeting. If you prepare and follow a budget long before publication, you'll be able to put aside the money necessary in order to make your book release the best it can possibly be. Back when I studied finance, I learned a ton of budgeting techniques, but I'm not gonna teach you those because to the untrained eye, they're fucking intense. This is all about creating a budget that's easy to use, even if you don't know anything about spreadsheets, even if you're not good at math. All you need is a calculator and access to Microsoft Excel or some other spreadsheeting platform like Numbers. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to create a super basic, super easy budget. So let's switch over to my spreadsheet in three, two, one, go. Okay, I've pulled up Excel. I've got a calculator on standby. And before we start the actual budget, there are a few things that we need to work out first. The first thing is what kind of budget are we working with? You can do a monthly budget, you can do a quarterly budget. If I were you, I would not recommend doing a yearly budget. The reason I feel this way is because your first few cycles with this budget are going to be an experiment. When people first start budgeting, they realize really quickly that they're spending a lot more money than they thought they were, which means their first few budgets are probably going to be a fail. They're probably going to go over and they're going to have to make some changes. If you make a monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly budget, that's fine. That means for one month, two months, or three months, you're having a little bit of wiggle room. But if you give yourself a year to figure things out, that's essentially a year wasted. Plus, lots of things can change in a year. Your bills can change in a year. Your job could change. For the sake of this video, I'm going to do a monthly budget, which means we are budgeting our money for one month. And then when the next month starts, we create a new budget. The next thing we need to do is figure out our monetary goals. It's nice to save money, but it's a lot more helpful if you know what you're saving for. If you don't have any specific savings goals and you just want to get into the habit of saving in general, you can skip this step entirely and go straight to the budget. It's at this time in the video, so click ahead and you'll be good to go. For everyone else who wants to create a savings goal, this is how it's done. The first step is to figure out what we are saving our money for. If you are going the self-publishing route, you might be saving your money 
money for an editor and a cover artist. You might be saving your money for a formatter and a proofreader. If you're going the traditional publishing route, you are likely saving your money for a marketing package. For the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it very simple and say that I'm saving my money for an editor. So I'm going to write editor here in my spreadsheet. And now I need to figure out roughly how much money I need to save. This is where the calculator comes into play. Just a heads up, you can do math right here in the spreadsheet. However, it does involve formulas and I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you guys, which is why I'm pulling up the calculator. Typically editors charge one to three cents per word. I recommend always using the more expensive figure for your budget because it's better to save too much money versus too little. So for the sake of this exercise, we are going to multiply three cents to our expected word count because three cents is obviously the higher price. So say you have a manuscript that you expect to be about 60,000 words. You will just multiply 60,000 times three cents, which is 0 0.03. So we're looking at $1,800 on the high end. We go back to our spreadsheet and we're saving $1,800 for an editor. Our next step is to figure out the time frame. When are we gonna need this cash? Say you expect to be done with your drafts and your beta reader process in two years. Because of this, we are going to add the time frame here. Now keep in mind, this is a monthly budget, which means we are looking at this at a month by month basis, not a year by year basis, which means we need to have $1,800 ready in 24 months because that's two years. Now all that's left to figure out is how much money we're saving per month, which is really easy to do. We pull up our calculator, $1,800 divided by 24, we're saving $75 a month. At this point, this is when we actually switch over to the budget itself. We're going to reference this spreadsheet in a little while, but for now we need a clean slate. Okay, we have a new spreadsheet pulled up, which means we are ready to start our budget. The very first step for budgeting is to label the budget. It's the easiest step. Jenna's budget. March 2019. Simple, effective. The next step is to list our items. These are the individual things that we typically spend our money on throughout the month. And we are going to list these items horizontally. So I like to write items right here in the first column so we know what's going to go across the page. The most obvious item to include is utilities. These are basically your monthly bills, the things you gotta pay for every month, like gas and electric. Another obvious item is food or groceries. I mean, you gotta eat, right? Another very common item is gas because, you know, you gotta drive places. From this point forward, it starts to get a lot more specific to the person. For example, in my household, we would definitely have a medical column because Cliff has a spinal cord injury so we have doctor's appointments and medication and things like that. I think a lot of people should include a media column. This is for things like going to the movies, your Netflix charge, buying books. Another item that will definitely be specific to the person is if there is something that you regularly spend your cash on. For example, there are some people who every single morning visit Starbucks. Another column you could potentially add is a home column. This is for things like upkeep around your house, cleaning supplies, or or yard work, things of that nature. Once you feel like you've exhausted all of your options, I definitely recommend including a miscellaneous column because you will realize very quickly that you forgot something. So you might as well have it accounted for. For the sake of this video, I'm going to eliminate some of these options. I'm gonna stick with these options and call it a day. Now that we figured out our items, our next step is to budget our items. This is where we figure out exactly how much money we're 
allowed to spend on each item during the month. This is going to be the next row. So I'm going to write budget right here. For utilities, it's smart to refer to your past bills and see exactly how much money you typically spend in a month. Say your utilities for the month is $900. That's how much we're budgeting. Then we move on to our other options, food, gas, media, Starbucks, and miscellaneous. If you'd like, you can refer to past grocery receipts for food. You can refer to past receipts for gas, but for pretty much everything else, this is just going to have to be educated guesses. Please, please, please take your income into mind, exactly how much money you make during a month, because it's really nice to say, yeah, I want to spend a thousand dollars on food every month, but that's not realistic for a lot of people. When we get to a column like Starbucks, something that you know you regularly spend your money on each day, this is another situation where you can actually make a fairly accurate guess. Say that you know your usual drink at Starbucks is $5 and you get this once a day. We can pull up our calculator and do 5 times 30. $150. That's how much you spend at Starbucks every month. And when it comes to miscellaneous, this is up to you whatever you think is a good guess. Maybe we're just going to make it $200 for now. Now that we have our budgeted amounts, we are going to move on to the next step, which is to create our totals. Now you're going to want to put your total very far down the budget because you're gonna need to have room between the budgeted amount and the totals. The reason for this is we're using this budget to track our spending, which is actually going to be the next Next set of rows, spending history. Basically everything in this massive chunk of space is going to be the spending history. So for example, when I receive a utility bill, I will be writing it here, 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 here. Now normally I would recommend having very long columns, like super long because we spend a lot of money during the month, but for the sake of this video, I am going to make the columns short. So this is going to be our total row. Now the total row is where we log how much money we've spent each month. All the food we spent money on, it's gonna show up here. All the gas we spent money on, it's gonna show up here. Now, unfortunately, this is where we get into formulas. We want our spreadsheet to automatically log everything we spend money on per column. Once you put this formula in, it's good to go. You don't have to worry about it ever again. So I want to log how much money I spend on utilities every single month. In order to do that, I'm going to do equal sign sum open parentheses and then I'm going to click this top, the very, very top cell of spending history and I'm going to drag it down to the bottom cell of spending history. Now we're going to do closed parentheses and enter zero because there's nothing available in these cells. That's what it should look like. We're going to do the same thing for every single column. Equal sign sum, open parentheses, click on the top cell of spending history, drag, release, close parentheses, enter. Equal sign, sum, open parentheses, click on the top cell of spending history, drag, release, close parentheses. What this allows you to do is now when you type in amounts, it's going to automatically calculate it down here. So you never have to worry about math ever again. So for example, say I spent $50 on food, bam, $50 shows up here. Say I spent another $25 on food, bam, it's adding it for me. The next row is going to be what I like to refer to as savings, though sometimes it's not going to be savings. Sometimes you're going to spend too much. And this is where you figure out how much money you have saved or how much money you've blown. And in order to figure that out, you're going to subtract your total from your budget. And the way we do that is we do equal sign, we click on the budget cell, which is $900, minus total, enter. 
So right now we haven't spent any money, so we've saved $900. Awesome. Again, equal sign, click on the budget cell for that column, minus, click on the total cell for that column, enter and you do that for every single column there we have it that is the basics of our budget our next step is not a necessary step but i personally like it and that is to focus on aesthetics i like my budget to be color coordinated i like there to be dollar signs and things of that nature so the first thing i want to do is center my title i'm going to click on that cell and i want it to be as wide as the budget itself so i'm going to highlight these cells and you do that by clicking on the first cell and dragging and click on merge what that does is it basically makes this one giant cell so now jenna's budget march 2019 is centered. How about we make the font a little bit bigger so it looks like a title and maybe we can make it bold. The next thing I want to do is center all the text available. So I'm going to highlight all of this and click on the little centering option. Already so much better. You'll see here that spending history doesn't even fit in this cell. The easy way to do this is to double click on this little edge right here and it expands this cell, it makes it wider. I also like the money to be represented with actual dollar signs, so anything where money is going to be involved, I highlight it, which is all of this, and then you click on the dollar sign option right here. Boom, now we got dollar signs. If you want, you can make further adjustments. I also sometimes like to have certain columns color coordinated, so maybe you can pull up this and make it pale green. Pretty, look, it's organized, we love it. So this last step, it doesn't really matter where you put it on your spreadsheet so long as it's somewhere near the budget itself. It can be beneath the budget, it could be off to the side. This is where we calculate our monthly totals because the budget doesn't really matter unless we get to see how everything is doing overall on a whole. The first thing we need to account for is our income. How much money do we make each month. And for the sake of figuring out whether this budget looks like it's going to be a realistic one for you, I would look at your past pay stubs and create a general estimated monthly income to use right now. So let's just say you make $2,500 a month. Next, we have our budget total. This is the amount that we are budgeting for the month. It is the amount we are allowing ourselves to spend. And in order to calculate this, we are going to go over into the next cell and we're going to do equal sign, sum, open parentheses, and then we are going to highlight this entire row. So we're going to start with the first cell, drag, 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 release, close parentheses, enter. We can then compare it to what our income is and we can see right now it's just below our income, which is perfect. That means that we are budgeting to spend less money than we should in theory be making this month. Next, we have our total spending. This is how much money you end up spending throughout the month. You're gonna put that here. And this is going to be the same deal, equal sign, sum, open parentheses, and we're going to highlight the total column. Whoop. Close parentheses, enter. Then we have our total savings. Total savings, tab over, equal sign, sum, open parentheses, highlight, close parentheses, enter. And again, we might wanna make this aesthetically pleasing. I'm going to merge the cell so it looks like a title. Now, as we spend money, we can track to see how we're doing in accordance with our budget. Also, if you get to the step and realize that your budget surpassed your income, say for example, your income is $2,000 a month. You can take a look at your budget and see, oh crap, I need to make some adjustments. Maybe it's not realistic for you to spend $150 at Starbucks. Maybe you're gonna need to cut back on that. Just use your coffee maker at home. Maybe it's not realistic for you to spend $100 on media. You can fiddle with these columns in order to make it work for your budget. Once we have this figured out, our next step is to compare it to our goals. Remember, we created goals at the very beginning of this video. We're trying to save $75 a month. 
Does our new budget account for that? Pulling up the budget, yes, it does. It looks like with this budget, we can potentially save $200 a month. That means we can get toward our editor goal much quicker, or we can use that extra money we're saving toward cover art or something else. Now you've got your finished budget. It may sound like you're done, but the truth is none of this matters unless you actually follow the budget. That means that when you spend money, you gotta pull up this budget and add those numbers. So say we get a bill, we gotta add that spending history here. We're just typing in the numbers as they come up. Say we went to the grocery store, you gotta type in those numbers. Say we went and pumped gas. You gotta keep putting in the figures so that your total can be calculated. If you go over one of your columns, that will be reflected in these calculations. So say for example, we spent way too much money on gas. We can see here that now the figure is in the negative. Then once the month is over and all is said and done, you can take a look and see how much money did you save this month? How much did you go over your budget? And you can make tweaks for the next month to compensate for that. Say for example, you realized you spend way too much money on books. You might have to make some sacrifices. You might have to switch to eBooks instead of paperback or hardback books. But once you have this format down and this budget is good to go, you can copy and paste it for each month or each quarter and then just tweak the columns as you see fit. And since you already plugged the formulas in, it's all going to be automatically accounted for. So there you have it. That's your easy budget from start to finish. Now you can see where exactly you're spending your money and even better, you can save up for an edit or cover art or marketing or whatever else you plan to spend your money on in the future. A huge thank you to Katherine Dublin for requesting this topic. If you'd like the chance to have a video dedicated to you or if you want access to tons of other rewards, check me out on Patreon. We've got our own private writing group. You get early access to videos. There's a monthly live stream. There's tons of signed merch. The link is listed below. Get on it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos on Wednesdays. And if you want to be alerted as soon as I upload, you just have to ring that bell down below. Tell them to ring the bell. Tell them to ring it. Ring it now. <laughs> the Savior's Champion is available in ebook, paperback, hardback, and signed hardback. All the links are listed below. Pick up a copy today and join Tobias on his grand, amazing adventure. Why? And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course, you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye! Hey, everyone, I'm Flynn. I fucking love myself. So if you love me, and you don't mind a bit of Jenna, then why don't you press the fucking subscribe button? You know you want to, because then you get to hear more of me. Anyways, press that button, ding the bell, and we'll have a great fucking time.